In the UK, over 14 million residents have a disability. Over 30% of people aged 16 and over have a chronic illness. And one in six adults experience mental health problems every week. BSI have launched the new Inclusive Service Kite Mark, an internationally recognized standard for protecting customers in vulnerable situations. This has been adopted by some of the UK's largest companies, protecting more than 38 million customers. Contact us to see how the Kite Mark certification can make your vulnerable customer provision stand out. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our webinar, um, Embracing the Inclusive Service Kite Mark. I'm Andy Gaskell, Senior Marketing Manager at BSI, and I'm absolutely delighted to welcome you to our to our hours webinar, and I thank you for your time uh, to, to, to dial in and, uh, and find out more about one of our, our newest and most exciting uh, kite marks within the business. Um, we, we have an expert panel today of uh, colleagues from, from, from BSI, and also uh, two esteemed clients in Payplan and Avantis Credit who have been through the Inclusive Service Kite Mark uh, journey and will be sharing, sharing their experience. So just a little bit of housekeeping uh, before we start. Um, all um, guests who have joined us are in a view-only mode. This means that your microphone uh, has been muted, um, so it doesn't interrupt the flow of the presentation, uh, but you're welcome to ask questions at any time, and there's a, there's a question box in the panel where, where you can put your questions in. We will have a Q&A at the end, so um, we will answer some as we go through, but, uh, but most will get answered towards the end. So anything that appears and, and you feel like you want, you want to ask it or while it's present, please put it in the, in the, in the Q&A box and we will, we will come back to it at the end. Um, you will also receive a recording of the webinar at the end um, on email afterwards and a copy of the slides as well so so please note down what you want but don't forget to scr scribble down everything as we will provide provide that with you um, today's webinar uh, will cover the inclusive service kite mark which is um, one of BSI's um, kind of kind of newest and uh, and, and, and interesting uh, kite marks and we will cover within it uh, how it has evolved from the BS ISO 22458 standard and how it aligns to the FCA FG21 uh, one guidance for firms for the fair treatment of vulnerable customers um, so we will have uh, Julie Walker who's, who's one of my colleagues um, talking through uh, the, 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 the kite mark and the journey we've been on we will also have uh, a representation from both Payplan and Avantis Credit who will give first-hand experience as to how they have um, how that how they have um, um, em embraced uh, the, uh, the, the, the the ISO guidance and uh, and gone through the journey of obtaining the uh, the inclusive service kite mark. We will also have a uh, a look at uh, the the marketing support that we offer uh, for for kite mark for anyone who wants to go through the journey, and we really welcome the the, the brand being used anywhere. It's recognised recognised by millions. Uh, we will finish off uh, with a, a series of questions uh, to, to, our, to our panel and give you the opportunity to, to obtain any, any further information that, that, that you will need. Um, the webinar uh, will last for an hour and uh, put in the, uh, in the right hand side the, uh, the, the timing so you get an idea as to, as to what we'll be working through. Um, with, without further ado, I will hand over to, to my colleague uh, Julie Walker, who is our uh, global scheme manager for the Inclusive Service Kite Mark, who will talk you through the ethos of the Kite Mark, its evolution, and where we are today. Okay, so thank you very much, Julie. Hello, <clears throat> thank you, Andy. Um, morning, everyone, and thank you for coming along to join our webinar today. So I'll be talking to you about the international standard ISO 22458 for consumer vulnerability, a little bit about what's in the standard and some of the benefits this can bring to organisations who successfully achieve the kite mark and a little bit how it aligns to the consumer duty. But first of all, why, why are we doing this? So let's have a look about the scale of vulnerability. So a lot has changed in the last 10 years there is a number of people already vulnerable and that is just increasing. We've had um, a lot change in the last 10 years with the pandemic and the cost of living crisis. And if we're looking at characteristics or risk factors such as ill health access, um, looking at skills such as language barriers, lower levels of literacy um, or numeracy, 
digital skills and life events such as divorce or bereavement. So not everyone would consider themselves as vulnerable, but if someone has one or more of these characteristics, then really they're, 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 that's going to have an impact on them and how they interact with organizations and um, potentially putting them at risk of harm if they can't read information or not able to make really sound decisions and um, which will provide them with the best outcome. So the FCA, um, I've done another survey recently in 2022, which is just how, how stark the situation is. So we've got 12.9 million UK adults having low financial resilience, which is one in four of all UK adults. And the number of consumers with characteristics of vulnerability is increasing to nearly 1 million compared to two years ago, which is a total of 24.9 million people, which is quite a lot. And as you can see from the other statistics, this is an ever increasing issue and cost of living crisis. It's not something that is likely to go away. It's going to continue for some time. So as you all know, regulators have also been working on changing their strategies to ensure that organisations do more to safeguard customers <clears throat> and make sure that those in vulnerable situations are really safeguarded and looked after. So many organisations are already making positive changes, thinking about their products and services and how these impact their vulnerable consumers. Um, all organisations should be making changes to make sure customers can easily interact with their services, understand them, and when times do get difficult, the organisation can really support them. So, as you know, all of us would want to have good experience, as well as our family and friends. So it's great to know when organisations are putting the customers at the heart of their design and their decision making. And it's something that certainly the Inclusive Service Kite Mark can help or bring organisations bring that reassurance. OK, so here's just a little bit of a snapshot of some of the things that are being expected by the FCA. Um, especially under their FG211, which is guidance for firms for the fair treatment of vulnerable consumers. And as you can see, it's all about understanding the needs of vulnerable consumers, skills and capabilities of staff, so making sure they're trained, they've got all the soft skills required to deal with the calls they get or interactions with vulnerable consumers, taking practical action to get those fair outcomes, and monitoring and evaluation so that they're not standing still and continually moving forward to make improvements. Um, and if you can see there, obviously, the definition of a vulnerable customer is someone who is, due to their personal circumstances, is especially susceptible to harm, particularly when a firm is not acting with the appropriate levels of care. And this is very similar to the standard um, and the additional kite mark testing measures, which I'll talk about shortly, which they state that an individual can be placed at risk of harm during the interaction with a service provider due to the presence of personal situations or market environmental factors. So the standard itself um, provides those guidelines for organisations on how to design and deliver fair, flexible and inclusive services that will increase positive outcomes for um, customers who are vulnerable and minimise that risk of consumer harm. And it's applicable to all organisations that provide services um, no matter whether what their location or what their size is. So we're going to just have to do a little bit of a poll just now, just to kind of get an idea from everyone um, where they think they are. How confident are you in your company's processes to ensure vulnerable customers are identified and handling handling that effectively? So if you want to just take a few seconds to um, complete the poll. Not sure I can see anything on there, but okay. So, it's, um, Andy, has everybody completed the poll? I, I'm not able to see that. 
to have yet. So uh, we have 9% uh, have said not at all, 64% um, somewhat, 27% um, confident and 0% don't know. So uh, thanks all for, for your feedback and it's really useful to gauge where you are in your process at the moment. Yeah, that's really good. And it's good to see that um, a lot of you are confident and certainly great to see that none of you are, are, are you know, are in a position where you're, you're, you know, not confident and needing to change a lot, um, which is a great. So thank you for doing that. So what I'm going to do is just talk a little bit, a um, bit of a high level overview of what the contents of the standard. And then I'll go on to talk about the additional kite mark measures that kind of take that above and um, show putting you above the you know best practice um for looking after vulnerable consumers. So first of all, you've got organizational commitments, principles and strategy. And this is this is really important. This is like the first section, and it's all about leadership um and that leadership demonstrate and communicate clear principles, putting inclusivity at the heart of the decision making, decision making and not putting any customers at risk of harm and certainly not unintentionally exploiting vulnerable consumers. Um, it's to make sure that vulnerability is embedded across the whole of the business throughout their culture and their strategies. So this section sets out the intent of the standard in terms of responsibility and accountability and how an organization is handling vulnerable consumers. So it's really important part of the business to make sure that not only specialized teams, but everyone across the business, the whole customer journey is able to manage the expectations of vulnerable customers and provide those fair outcomes. And then we move on to inclusive design. So the standard talks a lot about fairness and not exploiting consumers. So it's important from a strategy perspective that um, organizations are considering inclusive design across all areas of their products and services, information design and accessibility channels. And they're all available for vulnerable consumers. The standard looks a lot at touch points in this section that should be considered, such as cancelling services or switching products. So organisations really need to consider their customers in the design of these products, especially those um, that would impact the most, those that are most vulnerable. It details the use of using stakeholder groups and partners to understand the challenges facing vulnerable consumers. And that's to make sure that you're not missing out on new challenges which could emerge or ways to make improvements within the business. Um, an example of the touch points is when um, an organization provides sales advice to a customer. So you want to make sure that policies are in place, they're robust and demonstrate good practices when selling to vulnerable customers to ensure they fully understand and receive that fair treatment. So the next one is resources um, to support service delivery. And this is even more important. This is about having resources in place that your staff are being trained in how to recognize, record and respond when they identify a customer as vulnerable or being able to handle that call um, with the appropriate soft skills. So this should be your frontline staff, field staff, specialized teams, but also includes IT, publications, any resource that you may be given to a consumer. So as you know, some of these calls can be really challenging, especially if they have a customer who is dealing with bereavement, maybe have mental health or have serious financial difficulty and um, being diagnosed with a health condition. And the Kite Mark test measure requires that organizations ensure employees have that vulnerability training and that there's an ongoing program so that it doesn't just rest there, that they're continually updating that and reminding their staff of how to um, respond to customers they identify who need extra support. The training should also include how to properly identify risk factors, characteristics and behaviours of those who might need extra support. And now that focuses providing the relevant soft skills such as how to start a conversation about vulnerability, how to encourage um, individuals to share information about the difficulties they're experiencing. Um, as you know, um, customers are not always happy about sharing um, their situation or their circumstances. 
So it's making sure your staff have those skills so they can they can easily talk to a customer and draw that information out, but not insensitively and not being intrusive. Um, so the standard has a lot of guidance to help an organisation detail these risk factors and behaviours, as I said, and it should the training should be relevant to the challenges that you as an organisation and your customers are facing to make sure that they know what steps to take if they know a customer is at risk of severe harm or detriment, that your staff know where to direct them for specialist advice. And that could be internally within your own teams, or it could be through your partners, signposting to other organizations that can help a customer. I mean, staff will deal with some of the most harrowing calls. And so it's really important that they have all the right skills and knowledge in order to help support those customers and obviously support themselves and their own welfare as well. So there, there's quite a new section in um, the ISO 22458, um, the old standard, the 18477 for consumer vulnerability was um, put together in 2010. Um, so there wasn't so much focus on digital transformation. So in this standard, there's a new section which is dedicated to um, AI and uh, artificial intelligence and so that that doesn't prevent any bias. So regular assessments are so important and the AI, when it is being used, is there to help your business, but not put potentially harm consumers. Um, and if that happens, then you have plans in place to make those changes and rectify any issues. And, and obviously, you know, we are going through a digital transformation more more big businesses are using AI and digital channels. So it's really important that we consider our vulnerable customers and how that impacts them. So the next two sections are identifying and responding to consumer vulnerability. And that's all about understanding your customers, getting to know how your products and services impact them. The standard itself provides a lot of guidance in helping to identify those risk factors um, with lots of tables in there with um, a lot of information such as what those risk factors look like, age, ill health, life events such as bereavement, and it also touches on the different behaviours as well. And this is particularly good for organisations to assess that against the business so that they can see where those gaps are. Um, the standard itself um, has been formulated by many experts across the globe, so provides a wealth of um, information and experience and, and can really be used as a toolkit to assess against your business um, to identify those gaps. But lastly, and more importantly, is the monitoring and evaluation. So uh, once you've identified your customers and you know how to respond for them, um, you can you need to make sure that you're continually moving forward so now that um, you've looked at these resources you should take all your information such as your feedback and um, complaints and really look at that data engage with them with your stakeholders and partners and listening to your employees so that you can take that data and continually assess whether your services need improved is there more that you can do? Has the landscape changed? Are there new challenges? And put those improvements in place so that you're not just standing still and you continue moving forward. So I'll just move on. So that's, as I say, that was the contents of the standard. And this is more about the, the testing. So there is additional kite mark and um, test measures. And what they'll do is, this is where BSI can, can really help organisations. So what we'll do is we'll assess organisations to say that they have the capability to meet the requirements of the ISO 22458. And we'll test the output to see if all of these outputs are achieved and the intended outcome of your consumers is a positive one. And we can do that in a number of ways. So um, some of these test measures here are competence, um, so looking at your, making sure your staff are trained, having in place that training plan and not having any targets in place for those handling calls with vulnerable customers. You've got vulnerable customer contact. So as well as your 
different communication channels. It's just making sure it's clear that where customers can access these and that they're offered to all customers. You've got customer feedback and complaint resolution. So this is um, all about compliance, such as your regulatory codes, such as Ofgem, Utility Regulator Northern Ireland, FCA, and just detailing some of the um, expectations for them. So FCA, things like um, written acknowledgement of the receipt of a complaint, evidence in the complaint is being kept informed, and that your complaints resolution and final response um, is done within eight weeks. You've then got accessibility. So this is about not only just having been accessible channels, but that your web pages are compliant with the WCAG 2.1 guidelines and the organizations are working towards that AA standard and any accessibility issues which are identified, they have um, plans in place to rectify those and try and bring them up to that AA standard. You have payment and account control, which is all about flexible payment plans, having them in place, and more importantly, that customers are not being put at risk of financial difficulty. In particular, making sure that if you are offering flexible payment plans, that not only you're offering, but you're actually making sure that customers fully understand what they're agreeing to as well. And if their party companies are used to collect debts, um, which quite often they are, then they receive the same vulnerability training. So <clears throat> management information, I've said, it's quite quite a big part of um, the kite mark requirements and the standard as it is with the SCA requirements. And it's to ensure that you use data such as your complaint trends, analysis feedback, to, from customers, from your own staff, to demonstrate that you're using that data to identify problems and showing that you have plans in place to make those improvements based on that data. So we've conducted um, a lot of analysis comparing the regulators' principles and strategies against different areas of the standard. And so if organizations are taking up the kite mark and achieving that, they'll also be demonstrating that they're not only providing a great service for consumers in vulnerable situations, but they're also on that journey to demonstrating they're following the regulators' expectations and providing fair outcomes to consumers, ensuring they do not come to any harm as a result of the services they provide. So, as I say, ISO 22458 has been designed so that it can help organisations, especially those in the financial sector, get ready for consumer duty. Um, the standard for inclusive service is very closely aligned um, to the guidance on fair treatment for vulnerable customers. It's very clear. It has a lot of tables to use. It can be easily used as a toolkit to assess those requirements against a business, identify those gaps in their services, and develop um, robust improvement plans um, so they can they can ensure their business is truly providing um, an inclusive service. Okay, so this is just a little bit about the benefits. Um, there's many benefits to successfully achieving the inclusive service kite mark. Hopefully, you'll hear about some of them from um, PayPlan and Advantis shortly. Um, so putting vulnerable customers at the heart of your decision making and design, you're going to increase your accessibility and build trust with your customers, who are then more likely to keep coming back and in turn will also increase your customer base by making services accessible to a greater number of individuals. And there's also the important area of compliance um, and brand protection and trust. So as you've heard, standard is nicely aligned with the FCA. Therefore, it will demonstrate you've been independently assessed by BSI against the standard, uh, which will provide reassurance to your customers, your stakeholders, and your partners. Um, not only the, the reassurance to them, but also to, to the regulators that you're, you're demonstrating good ethical behavior and, and social responsibility when it comes to supporting those vulnerable customers. Um, 
It can also help with strengthening the skills, um, improving the well-being of your own people. Um, so when you're providing them with that training, looking after their welfare, you're making them feel valued. Whilst dealing with difficult calls or situations, you're actually building a really strong workforce with good morale, who are confident in dealing with difficult calls and actually have all the tools they need to provide fair outcomes for all. And it will reduce the likelihood um, of problems and complaints and improve the quality of customer interactions and therefore they reduce the risk of harm. So hopefully you can see that the standard has a lot in it. Um, it can be, as I say, used as a toolkit and a guide, um, but you've got that added value that BSI can offer you with the independent assurance um, from conducting assessments in your organisation. Uh, robustly testing your system to industry best practice to show the compliance with the requirements of the standard and the kite mod test measures. And just, just displaying that trust to your, your customers and your staff and your regulators that you're doing the right thing for all your customers, in particular those who are most vulnerable. Okay, I'll just move the slide on. So just to give you an idea, these are some of the people, organisation who have been first in the finance sector to achieve the inclusive service kite mark across the globe. This is an international standard. Um, it's such a fantastic achievement for Santander, Advantis and um, PayPal. And um, it's a testament to how much they are doing to support their customers in vulnerable situations. So I hope you've enjoyed um, hearing about the standard, um, what's in the standard and some of the benefits and the additional kite mark measures. And um, if you have any questions, please do pop them in the chat um, or if you, that later on you'll get our de my details. So if anyone wants to talk a bit more about the, the alignment with the FSA, please, please do get in touch. And now I'm going to hand over to Emma, who is um, from Payplan, who's going to share their experience of working with BSI and achieving the inclusive service kite mark. Thanks, Julie. So my name's Emma and I'm the vulnerability lead um, at Payplan. So I'm just going to start by introducing Payplan, who we are, what we do, and then I'll talk you through our journey to achieving the, the BSI inclusive service kite mark and then talk to you about some of the current initiatives we have all around um, improving our service. So at Payplan, we are regulated by the FCA to provide free debt advice and solutions. And we've been doing that for over 30 years now, so since 1992. And the demand for debt advice has never been higher. And we are supporting in excess of three and a half thousand people every week with debt advice. Now, that is being driven by the cost of living crisis, of course. And in doing so, we need to ensure that we also provide full holistic advice and a full range of, sol of solutions to our clients, which is, is, is key. Now, due to the cost of living crisis, we are seeing a very different demographic of clients reaching out for debt advice for the first time than we were this time last year. So we're seeing more deficit budgets, we're seeing more self-employed uh, clients, higher earners, so higher income brackets, um, and also homeowners. So having that full range of solutions is really key to be able to offer that full level of support and of course to be inclusive. And just so you know, when you're in a safe pair of hands, we're rated as excellent on Trustpilot, and are recommended by the Money and Pension Service. And our logo, as you can see, more than debt advice, really demonstrates how important it is that we embed inclusivity into debt advice and ensure client services are accessible for everyone. And being awarded the inclusive kite mark is really testament to that. So how do we do it? How do we go about achieving the kite mark? Well, what we did to demonstrate compliance against both the standard and kite mark requirements, um, when we actually received all these particular requirements around inclusivity, we broke these down into sections and we looked at the controls that we had in place against the, the scheme. So for example, we looked at the policies that we had, the mapped out processes, the training and competency schemes, and of course QA, just as a couple of examples of controls. 
We then used our risk matrix of one to four to look at any areas of weaknesses that we might have. So we really knew what our focus areas were and we set those against a time frame and a timeline and key dates were then set to really ensure that they could be measured and they could be completed within those time scales. And an owner was also attached to those particular um, measures as well. Um, the sections, as Julia's already kind of like referenced, the, so the sections we broke that were broken down into were organisational commitments, principles and strategy, inclusive design, resources to support service delivery, identifying consumer vulnerability, responding to consumer vulnerability and monitoring evaluation and improvement. And you can really see from looking at those headings of those sections how this is really aligned to achieving consumer duty and delivering good outcomes. So really focusing on accessible products and services, value, consumer understanding and support. So how do we actually demonstrate inclusivity then at PayPlan? Well, this is just a bit of a snapshot and these are some of the key areas that support this to ensure that high risk individuals have actually access to data advice. So we offer a multi-channel service, so both phone and digital journey. And we've also incorporated things like live chat and WhatsApp to our channel offering. But also ensuring that channel shift and flexibility in communication methods for our clients is promoted to um, encourage client engagement, but also giving them that freedom of choice and those options of how they can engage with us, which is really key, dependent on their own situations and circumstances. And to demonstrate continuous improvement, um, in March of last year, we were the first debt advice organisation um, to work with Sign Video to provide a service for the deaf community who use British Sign Language to communicate. Now, when you think that there are 12 million people in the UK that are deaf or that are hard of hearing, that's a large community that may face barriers um, and issues with accessing debt advice. So having that channel of communication is really vital for being inclusive for this particular community. Other initiatives such as um, Amplify, so looking at our client communications and ensuring understanding, the use of plain numbers and simplifying numerical information, and having robust and co-designed services with our partners is really key to provide that tailored pathway into debt advice. And of course, training, as we've already talked about, that's really key for all of our staff and our partners as well. And not just for our special advice teams, but for all of our client facing teams to ensure client vulnerability is identified early in the client journey, irrespective of the method of engagement and communication. And reciprocal training with external partners has really been an important addition to our training um, as well both at induction and for existing staff training. So it really helps to focus on the bespoke needs and requirements of our vulnerable clients. So to give you an example, we work very closely with Bipolar UK. So understanding a client living with bipolar, being aware and being able to identify those periods of mania and depression and the impact that has um, on, on certain areas such as, as spending habits, it's really important to incorporate that into the client journey and to ensure the right outcome is reached. Is reached. So collaborative working is really key. And then meeting needs through our holistic support as well. So thinking about a tailored approach and that having wider support needs is vitally important. And using client feedback to enhance the journey through voice of the customer, and focus groups as two examples is really key to continually improve and evolve our service and ensure inclusivity. And having that robust network of external partners that we can signpost to or preferably directly refer to is really vital to offer that holistic support and ultimately the right outcome. So having the support of PayPlan running alongside that wider support needs is much more likely to have a positive outcome. And to give you an example of this, being able to hotkey or warm transfer directly into GAMCARE's helpline 
for gambling related financial harms and those compulsive behaviours with gambling or to the National Bereavement Service for guidance and support in such difficult circumstances. And we call this walking the client through the door. So it's just that additional layer of support and reassurance. And then thinking about that targeted cost of living support. So we've actually created Budget Smart. And this is an example of how we continually strive to ensure debt advice is accessible to all. And this is really a one stop shop to explore income maximization and expenditure reduction that all of our clients have access to but that isn't overwhelming, so they can focus on one area at a time, section by section, step by step, and they can do it at a pace that they can deal with as well. And just to finish on, in terms of the other initiatives, some of these I've, I've already mentioned as well, um, plain numbers, which help firms support their customers by presenting numbers and data in a new way to increase engagement with debt advice, while also improving levels of understanding for its customers. As I said, we've teamed up with British Sign Language Video Interpreting Service to improve accessibility to our customers across the UK and again becoming the first UK debt advice company to provide access to this particular service. And we've also achieved the recognised partner award for the work we have done with the Illegal Money Lending Team and their Stop Loan Sharks campaign certainly an area that we've seen a big increase in with the cost of living crisis driving more high risk people to reaching out to loan sharks. And of course, we've talked about it already, but with consumer duty pending, these achievements, these initiatives and key partnerships are ensuring best outcomes for the most vulnerable and high risk groups. And to be able to access free debt advice when they need to and in a way that actually meets their needs. So at PayPlan, we are very proud to become the first debt advice provider in the UK to achieve the inclusive service kite mark for providing that inclusive and flexible service that benefits all consumers regardless of their personal circumstances. So thank you very much and I'll now hand back to Julie. Thank you, Emma. That's great. It's lovely to see all the amazing things that you're doing and, and well done on your achievement, getting the kite mark. That, that's, that's really good. So I'm going to hand you. over now to Sarah Jane um, from Advantis Credit, um, who will share their experience. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Sarah Jane. I'm the Client Services Director at Advantis. Um, and I managed our um, implementation of the ISO 22458 standard um, into the business, which is why I'm talking to you about that this morning. Um, so to start off with, um, I really just wanted to talk a little bit um, about Advantis to, to give you a sense of who we are for anyone who might not have come across us before. Um, so we're a UK-based debt collection agency. Um, we've got um, nearly 20 years now of heritage behind us and um, we became part of the CEDA group in January 2020. Uh, we specialise in contingent debt collection across a, a range of industries um, and uh, essentially um, I just wanted to give a sense of scale and, and context really of us in, in terms of the background in which we implemented the standard. Um, so on an annual basis we're dealing with about 2.2 million accounts um, which equates to um, circa 180 um, debts being placed with the with can't speak being placed with us each month, um, and uh, and we complete about 200 million pounds worth of of debt um, in collections for our clients on an annual basis. Um, we've got 250 employees here on site in Stoke-on-Trent, um, so that just gives you um, a little bit of a sense really of of who we are. Um, and the size of the organisation um, in terms of that implementation piece. Um, and then I wanted to talk to you um, a little bit around our decision making process and how we decided um, to make the move to, to go for the standard. Um, I know Julie um, and Emma have talked a lot about all the benefits of the, of the standard. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you on this call today are considering um, whether it's the right move for you. Um, it certainly was for us. And I, and I just wanted to talk on the next slide around um, how we got to that decision. Um, so one of the key things for us was around alignment to, to regulation and our regulators, the FCA. 
Um, so like um, I'm sure everyone on this call this morning, we're currently working really hard um, on implementation of consumer duty that comes in um, at the end of July. Um, and that was really one of the big drivers for us with standard. Um, so we did a gap analysis piece um, on the standard itself um, compared to the consumer duty. Um, and we found um, huge alignment there. Um, and one of the things for us that we were looking at was how are we going to evidence to the regulator that we're compliant with their with their requirements for consumer duty? Um, we've got a lot of internal MI um, and we feel we can talk intelligently about what we're doing, what we're seeing, the feedback we're getting from customers, how that is um, really informing um, and improving um, strategy and customer treatment internally on an ongoing um, basis. Um, but we really wanted um, something that was that's really going to rubber stamp that, I suppose, for us as well. Um, and we felt strongly that this standard was going to do that. Um, that external validation piece as well, I think, outward looking in, um, both from a, a regulator perspective, but from a, a client and customer perspective um, as well. Um, and as Julie and Emma have both talked to, I think it's that um, change in demographic that we're seeing out there in the marketplace at the moment. So the, the cost of living um, is a topic that I talk about extensively with all of our clients on a monthly basis in terms of, of what we're seeing and the movement that we're seeing in the debt um, in the debt sector and the debt marketplace. Um, and there's an increased focus on social values, um, which I'm sure um, a lot of you were seeing and experiencing as well. Um, and we just felt that this standard really spoke to all of those areas. Um, so yes, you know, there's obviously a, a big focus on recognizing and handling vulnerability, um, but there's also a big focus on accessibility um, and just general handling and treatment of customers being outcome-based and based on the customer's own circumstances to find the right solution for them. Um, and that really resonates not only with the regulator, um, but also um, in that wider marketplace with what we're seeing at the moment. Um, so for us, um, it, it just made sense. Um, and, and I was very fortunate um, when um, talking to our board about this, that we had immediate buy-in um, from everybody um, in terms of that direction. Um, also, the kite mark was a big attraction for us. Um, so I think, you know, a lot of people who don't work in compliance um, might not necessarily have a huge understanding of what an ISO is. Um, but most people understand that a kite mark um, is a badge of best practice um, and, uh, and, a, and a high standard um, that you're holding yourself to. Um, so again, you know, from a customer perspective, we wanted to build that trust with customers and have customers feel confident in engaging with us. Um, and we felt, again, this standard was, was going to bring that um, and add to that, especially with the changing demographic that we're seeing with more customers than ever um, coming to us that are in debt for the first time and um, haven't had experience with that before have watched TV programs like Can't Pay, Take It Away, um, and think that is what uh, debt collection is when it couldn't really be further from the truth and, and we're a, a highly regulated customer-centric industry. Um, but again, um, we felt that this standard, particularly when it came to customers that might need that extra support um, and might be um, particularly reticent to, to get in touch because they were worried about what their experience might be with a debt collection agency. Um, we felt that that would um, really help support them um, and make them feel confident in engaging with us. Um, also, um, I've touched on where we are in the um, in the marketplace at the moment and, and where we are um, in terms of cost of living, social values and, and the increased focus in, in that area. Um, we also feel that moving forward, um, looking at future new business opportunities, um, ISO 22458 is a fantastic badge when you're going through a tender process, a sales um, pitch. Um, we think there's a, a new business um, aspect there um, as a, as a add-on I suppose um, and just the extra requirements of the kite mark as well so the um, a lot of the other ISO standards that we have um, aren't to a kite mark um, and we feel that this regime really just goes that extra mile um, and just demonstrates that commitment to supporting customers um, which is what consumer duty is all about um, and really it's the it's the foundation of our culture as well and um, so it just aligned really nicely for us um, 
and then um, on the next slide, I just want to talk a little bit about, about our journey, um, really. So prior to ISO 22458, um, we held the BS 18477 um, standard, um, which was the precursor to the to the ISO. Um, and our journey um, from the British standard to the ISO um, started in December last year, um, and we were accredited in March this year. Um, so I think we were fortunate in that we were already working um, towards the consumer duty and there was that alignment um, and also in the in the debt collection um, industry and, and the scope of what we do products wise, we've got one product and that is collecting debt on behalf of our clients. Um, so the conversations that we're having um, are all in that specialism. Um, obviously, with a with a bank um, or financial institution where you've got different products, um, the complexity might be slightly different. So I'm not suggesting that everyone can make that journey um, within that three month um, time scale. Um, that was our journey, um, and it took a lot of effort um, and a lot of commitment um, from the entire business in order to get us there. Um, so in terms of the upgrade itself. Um, similar to, to Emma um, and how she described um, the journey at PayPlan, we started off with a gap analysis. Um, so that was both um, against the regulation that we're um, working to um, and also against the 18477 standard and um, what we've got in place and, and where we've got gaps and, and what that looked like. Um, we put a working party together um, internally um, that we had um, regular fortnightly meetings to review um, where we were up to with the upgrade um, and how things were progressing. Um, and as a result of that, we put a number of process changes in place. Um, so a lot of those were around training. Um, so um, some of the training updates that we did, for example, involved um, liaising with external partners. So we work closely with MIND and the Samaritans and the Money Advice and Pension Service. Um, and that's really, I think, helped to give the entirety of our business um, more confidence um, in the conversations that they're having um, with customers and, and finding those right outcomes for customers as well. Um, we've also made changes um, to our MI, um, really to evidence um, the outcomes that we're getting for customers and to incorporate the customer feedback that we're getting within that as well, which I think um, is a really important part of the standard um, and also a really important, a really important point of the consumer duty um, regulation as well is that that stakeholder aspect that I think Emma and, and Julie both spoke to um, in their presentations. Um, and I think certainly for us, that was something that we maybe didn't do as much prior to um, working through and implementing um, the 22458 standard. Um, and we're now working really closely with Step Change and Money Advice and Pension Service. I'm hoping after this um, to liaise with Emma and get PayPlan um, involved as well. Um, but also we've got um, customer focus groups as well. Um, and that helps us to really inform um, not only the treatment of customers from our frontline staff, um, but right back to the, the planning stage um, and the delivery of that. And I think that was one of the other areas for us that was a, was a real focus when we were looking at process changes, because typically um, I think the focus when you talk about vulnerability, when you talk about accessibility is all about that frontline customer. Um, but within the standard, um, it's from the design all the way through to the, to the end point. Um, and so the training that we did wasn't just with frontline staff, it was everybody. Um, and that was really important for us from a culture perspective to bring everybody on that journey, um, both from the standard and the consumer duty perspective. Um, and it's been really positive. Um, so it's involved a number of process changes um, to what we do in, in departments such as IT, um, change control um, and finance just to make sure we've got that standard um, fully embedded. Um, yeah, and the other thing I wanted to just touch on was the support we had from BSI. So um, through the implementation of the standard, um, I had a number of phone calls um, with Kieran and Chris to talk through, um, making sure our, our understanding of the requirements were correct. Um, there's some fantastic guides um, that BSI have produced 
um, that really helped with the gap analysis and making sure that we fully understood what the standard was asking for um, and just the audit process itself um, we went through that with uh, with a gentleman called Ken um, and it was a really sort of consultant look can't even speak today I don't know what's going on um, a real um, sort of consultancy approach um, in terms of explaining how the audit process was going to work and um, what would be required um, and, and a, a really um, a really positive feel to the entire audit we felt um, so um, our whole experience from, from start to end with BSI has been really positive um, and then the final slide um, for me um, was really just to recap and, and probably echo what Emma said and, and also Julie, that I think where we are now, we're incredibly proud to have been the first DCA to be um, recognised with the, with the Kite Mark certification. Um, for us as a business, it's given us increased confidence in, in what we're doing um, in terms of not only um, the customer outcomes, but just how we're designing and, and delivering our service as well. Um, it gives our clients increased confidence um, in terms of us being a safe pair of hands to um, entrust their customers to. Um, and it's also given us um, a basis for an ongoing program of continuous improvement as well. Thank you, Julie. I'll hand back to you. Thank you, um, Sarah Jane. I just want to say how inspirational it is listening to, to everything that you've done and put into your organisation. It's it's absolutely fantastic and well done. So I'm just going to quickly hand over to um, Andy, um, who's going to just um, go through a few bits about marketing. Thank you, Julie. Um, I won't take too long, but I thought as a marketer, it'd be um, rude not to talk about marketing on the uh, on the call for a little bit uh, or a minute or two and just kind of show you some of the things that, that we can support with. Um, so I'm incredibly proud to work for the BSI and incredibly proud of, of the Kite Mark and, uh, and what it brings and the fact that it's kind of recognised by millions across the UK and, and throughout the world. Um, and we want our customers or our clients to share in that in that pride as well as as many of them do. Um, and what I just wanted to kind of make you aware at the early stage of, of your decision making is um, we fully support you with, with marketing uh, throughout throughout the process in terms of when you get certified, um, helping you make the most of the market trust which which you've earned. Um, so. When a client has become certified, uh, we provide them with a marketing toolkit, which explains how the uh, Kite Mark can be used in anything from presentations to, to physical products to, to websites or, or, or so. And we have a specific trade marketing team in place within the business to, to help you. But just going to draw your attention to the um, to the chart on the right. We regularly conduct uh, research through through YouGov, and uh, we are seeing that um, through our through our um, sample of about 3,000 people we took last year, one in two had uh, awareness of knowledge of the of the BSI kite mark from a consumer point of view. Um, in industry, it was, it was slightly higher, um, and uh, the increased confidence that it gives the consumer compared to products without the kite mark was was significant. So we see it as a a really good kind of kind of mark of trust from uh, getting a business's kind of process is right but also for differentiating yourself differentiating yourself in the marketplace and, and in the next slide um which is my last one i'm, I'm going to finish on um i just wanted to share some of the things that um that, that our um, our clients have done with the kite mark uh, to, to give you some ideas if you're looking at it from a uh, kind of gaining a, a market competitive uh, advantage through it through through gaining certification so we've had companies such as uh, such as dfs uh, have produced a specific uh, collateral um around the kite mark um next as you can see in the bottom the uh, the silver ones have used the kite mark on the banners at exhibition stands we really like to celebrate uh, our work our clients um achievements so uh, so we ran um for our first um dozen clients which went through the inclusive service kite mark uh um, certification process a social media campaign um praising praising their efforts um but one of the things that i think has kind of been really interesting is say if you go onto the santander website on the front page they have um, included the inclusive service kite mark as part of their offering and what we've done is working with them is we've produced a tailored landing page on our website which the um, link takes you through to to explain what the kite mark is all about as it's our information it's always always up to date <coughs> so just kind of the message i want to <coughs> whilst my voice is going um 
just the message you want to get across is um, we're here to help you within your journey um, from a uh, from a kind of skills and knowledge point of view from, from Julie's area, but also from a differentiator for marketing. We, we want to help you, want to support you, we really want to help you make the most of, of your certification as well. Um, what I'll just do on the uh, on the next slide is I've, I've got the details of our uh, of our, of our people that can help you if you decide that you want to take your inclusive service kite mark journey if you, if you like the sound of kind of what you've heard earlier in the call um we've got chris and joe who, who are both excellent at working with our clients to help them work through their, their specifications uh, and, and also also julie as well as i mentioned beforehand you will get a copy of the slides at the end of the uh, the end of the course there's no need to write all these details down um but i've just got a a poll that i'd like to share with you to see if anybody would like any, any further information from us afterwards you just take uh, 30 seconds or so to say whether you want to, uh, a person from BSI uh, to, to work with you, and then we'll, we'll close out with any questions for our panel. Okay, thank you. Um, right, I think it's time to, uh, uh, to take some questions then. Okay, um, so I've had, so I've had a couple that have come through. Uh, I will start with one that I will ask um, ask uh, ask Julie. And uh, if anyone's any questions they want to ask uh, any of our panel, please please put the question in the in, in the chat. And if, if it's directed to a specific person, please please put the name there as well. Um, so Julie, would you be able to give us a um, kind of ballpark time frame that uh, that clients looking to get certified to the inclusive service kite mark um, uh, go through from kind of start to finish? Yep. So, um, I mean, obviously it does differ depending on how ready the organization is, how big the organization is. But I would say from the start, um, from um, first initially contacting and speaking to people like Joe and Chris, myself, to doing your first um, initial gap analysis day through to um, your first kind of stages of assessment right through to the end and being certified. And potentially you could do it in a, in a, in at least I would say five or six months, maybe sooner, depending on how ready you are. But obviously it, it can be longer, depending on um, you know when you get your gap analysis, there might be things that you identify that you want to change that might take a bit longer. And um, but certainly um, I would say um, six six months should be a good average. Okay, thank you very much, Julie. Uh, and, and I've got one. Um, do you know what? I'll ask it to both uh, to both Emma and uh, and, and Sarah Jane that's come in. Um, how have you embedded the learnings um, from uh, becoming Inclusive Service Kite Mark certified within your business? So we'll start with Emma. Um, so in terms of embedment, um, to be fair, because we've been um, aligned to the FCA regulations, it's kind of like almost become our, our culture around vulnerability, around identifying our high-risk clients. So actually having the kite mark has just kind of like really ring-fenced a lot of the, the policies and procedures that we absolutely had in place already. Um, but it's actually helped us to think, well, we are in a really good place and, and ready for consumer duty. It's helped us align very much to, to consumer duty. Um, and it's helped us it just to become more of a, um, a BAU, really, in terms of um, it's, it's an everyday occurrence. It's not just an add-on. And the fact that it's incorporated into every part of our design processes and um, our, our projects, um, it's, you know, we, um, we, we make sure that it's incorporated to every stage of a client journey. So it's really helped us with that aspect as well. OK, thank you, Emma. Um, Sarah Jane, do you have a view? I'd say exactly the same as Emma. I'd say, you know, from our perspective, it's completely aligned with consumer duty. Um, so they go hand in hand. Um, it's part of our culture. Um, and then I've, I suppose the only thing I'd, I'd say we've um, we've done as well, which I, I think Emma um, talked about on, on her presentation anyway, is just, um, you know, the regular training to make sure that it stays in people's um, minds and it's at the forefront of what they're thinking about. Um, and we use our electronic learning system um, to, to great effect for that. Mm. 
and just just something else just for me to add it's just it's i guess as well it's it's not a case of just right we've got this kite mark now and that's it it's a continual yeah. journey and it's continually thinking right what can we do to continually improve so around some of the initiatives that i've already talked about so actually it just makes you want to do even more so it's um yeah it's it's a great yeah. um in, an initiative in itself to, to make you want to do more for your high-risk clients okay um <clears throat> We haven't got any more questions that have come through our, our panel and we're pretty much bang on 11 o'clock. So what I will do is I will um, close off the webinar and say thank you to all of our presenters. Uh, I hope you found, I, I hope as, as joining as a, as, a, as, as guests, it's been it's, it's been enjoyable, and uh, I really am grateful for for Julie for talking us through the, the the inclusive service kite mark, what it's all about, and how it aligns with, uh, with, with with the relevant guidance, and also for Emma and Sarah Jane for sharing their kind of first hand experience, who have both both of them have lived through the through the process and uh, and uh, and gone through it from from start to finish, and I'm, I'm really grateful for them sharing their stories, and I hope the audience has uh, has taken some some, some motivation or uh, or uh, some some uh, so recognition in terms of in terms of what they've done and it will help them on their journey as well and um, just as a final close out what, what i'm going to do is uh, sh share a video which we shot when we we welcomed our first um, nine clients who achieved this uh, inclusive service kite mark uh, to kite mark court at bsi to to to, to achieve the to to collect certificates um it's just a, a little bit of information about how they've how they found the process and um and, and what they've achieved from it so uh, thank you so much everybody for uh, for, for joining us uh, thank you so much for, for our panel uh, if you've got any questions um please get in touch with the email addresses which you'll receive on the on the slides that go around and we look forward to hearing from you in the future I think as an organisation we were quite fortunate in that we've gone through previous BSI assessments and we held the BSI for inclusive service provision but what was really good about this one is that the ISO definitely expanded the remit so we were looking and exploring other areas that previously we hadn't considered before so that helped us look at practices that maybe we hadn't thought of so it was a really useful exercise yeah really one that was worth undertaking in terms of that whole gap analysis this piece of work. Well at Payplan we've been working with the FCA vulnerability guidelines for some time now and therefore we already had documented policies, procedures and a governance structure in place. So the main exercise for us was matching up the controls we had in place and then against the scheme. What we did was we completed a risk assessment so that was conducted to understand areas where there maybe were some weaknesses in place and then what further measures were required to actually to be taken to, to complete that. And of course, we're working towards consumer duty and the Kite Mark scheme has really demonstrated that we have robust policies and procedures in place to, to really achieve that as well. I found the scheme easy to follow. Um, I think with the previous experience that we had from the BSI 18477, um, we had uh, a good take and idea of how it was structured. So then it was just mapping the new standard into our existing processes to understand how it would fit. I think what the assessment flagged up to us was that there was opportunities for improvement in some of our processes, so our policy documents around our processes. So although as a business we're really aware what we need to do, um, some of the documentation probably wasn't as reflective of that as it could have been. So there was definitely improvements that we made in that area. Also being really transparent with our customers in terms of how they use their data. Um, so additional information was added to the website to allow them to see that. Through doing the audit, it's actually given us a little bit more controls in place to enable us to make sure that those are being communicated out and that we're confident that we're not only delivering that training, but that actually we can look back and say when it's been delivered, what teams it's been delivered to. And I think as a part of that, we've identified a couple of gaps where we can 
at an Improver training programme. Well, for us, the only area of non-conformity was in relation to dealing with third-party representatives. So we created a policy in dealing with third-party representatives, which has addressed that point for us. Um, and there were no other areas of non-conformity. Yes, so we, we moved on to the ISO standard with the associated kite mark, which um, is well known by customers. So that gives us the confidence that we're working to this standard and also gives our customers confidence that we're doing the right thing for them and giving them an inclusive service. It's so reassuring that we now have ISO 22458. We're one of the first nine in the world. What an accolade for someone like Par and I. We're a small electricity supplier in Northern Ireland. We've always been known for being a caring and responsible business, but it gives our staff and our customers a real renewed sense of achievement and reassurance and confidence that we will always do the right thing for them. For us, we're, the customers always centre to what we're doing. So we have continuous improvement, it's been built in from staff, people on the ground, and that we're always looking for ways to improve. Well, all organisations in the financial industry will be working towards consumer duty, and looking at a journey towards the kite mark is a really great step forward in preparation and really embedding this into an organisation, which is key. I would recommend any other organisation that first of all, focus on your customer and know who your customers are build your processes around it, making sure that they're fair and inclusive. I think really to, to reach out to others and um, you know share best practice, look for people who've already achieved a kite mark. It's really important to try and get that experience from people who have already undertaken that work. Um, I would say do it and do it as soon as you can. It's really hard work but it's worth the effort. The sense of achievement that we now all have is like nothing else. It's really important that you put a focus on your most vulnerable customers and there's no better way than ISO 22458. I would say get hold of the standard, have a look through it and do a self-assessment and they'll probably find that they're doing quite a lot of it already and can cross some of it off quite easily and then they'll be able to see the gaps that they have, work through them, put a plan in place and a time scale against them to get those done um, and then they know what they've got to work towards and if they have any questions BSI will always be on hand to help them and as organisations who have already been through the standard um, will be more than happy to share our experience. Mm -hmm.